Okay, another Land Rover topic today. What is a Land Rover Santana? There's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of confusion. We'll talk a little bit about the history, what a Land Rover Santana is, and maybe more importantly, what it isn't. So stick around. All right, welcome back. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Paul Masenchik with Autology Motors here in Denia, Spain. And today I want to talk about Land Rover Santanas. It's a question I get all the time. What exactly is a Land Rover Santana? How is it different from any other Land Rover? And are there any inherent advantages or disadvantages to owning one? Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there about Land Rover Santanas, and this causes confusion in the minds of buyers and enthusiasts. There are people who swear by Land Rover Santanas, and there's people who criticize them. And sometimes these positions are unfair on both sides. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Santana and what the trucks really are. First of all, I think a lot of the confusion about Santanas stems from a couple things. One is Santana is a company, it's not a car. So asking the question, what is a Santana, is a little bit like asking the question, what is a Jeep? There isn't really one answer that applies to all the different vehicles that they made. And the second source of confusion regarding Santanas is that there was essentially, in my opinion anyway, three eras of Santana production. And how the vehicles were produced in these three eras differs, and that has an impact on the vehicles themselves. So briefly, let's look at the Land Rover Santana history and chart these three eras. In brief, Land Rover built Land Rovers in Spain under official license with Santana from about 1958 to 1983. These were officially licensed Land Rovers built and supported by Land Rover in Solihull. Now the first era of production runs from the beginning of the license, 1958, through pretty much the end of the 1960s. And during this period, Santana was producing officially licensed Land Rovers and assembling them in Spain from kits that were shipped from the United Kingdom. These are commonly known as CKDs, complete knockdown kits, entire Land Rovers sent from England to Spain and assembled there in Andalusia in the south of Spain by Metallurgica Santa Ana or Santana. And this was by no means unprecedented. Land Rover produced vehicles in other areas of the world as well under official license. What is somewhat unprecedented about the arrangement is that Santana was highly successful at it. So during this period, 1958 through basically the end of the 1960s, a Santana Land Rover is essentially identical to its Solihull counterpart because they were being built from CKDs, from complete kits sent from England. Basically all the parts, tooling and everything was coming from England. And the build quality was very, very good in Spain. The assembly quality was good. It was good in England as well. And during this period, the vehicles are essentially identical. A Series 2, Series 2A Land Rover built in England or in Spain, extremely comparable. I've taken them apart side by side. They're virtually indistinguishable. Anything you would buy for a vehicle built in Spain, you could buy from a normal Land Rover parts supplier, and it would fit and function exactly the same as the part that came off the Santana. Now, during the later part of the 1960s and into the 1970s, when the Series 3s were being introduced, Santana began to introduce some of their own minor modifications and some of their own pieces. Now, the reason for this is because Land Rover in the United Kingdom was owned during this period, the late 1960s and 1970s, by British Leyland. And although British Leyland is famous for a lot of things, not too many of them are good. British Leyland was famous for being constantly in financial difficulty. They had problems with assembly quality and they were notoriously tight-fisted and loath to introduce new models or even make improvements to existing models. This is the period, the late 60s and 1970s, when British Leyland was presiding over sort of the demise of proud marks like MG and Triumph. And they were consistently struggling financially. Santana was comparatively flush. They were a highly successful company, and they had very strong market share in areas where the vehicles were being subjected to fairly grueling use. North Africa, Latin America, and in a lot of ways, Santana was exposed to some of the shortcomings in the Land Rover designs to a greater extent than maybe even Land Rover themselves were, and they had the money and the wherewithal and the engineering clout to address them. So they did. 
Now, initially, this took very mild forms. Maybe the contour of the seats for a little bit more comfort, some additional interior trim that wasn't being offered out of the United Kingdom, things like that. But as the 1970s progressed, they did start to introduce their own tooling. They started to improve some parts. They introduced their own upgrades, such as power steering on series trucks and things that weren't being offered out of England. And late on in the 1970s, they even introduced their own six-cylinder engine, their own five-speed transmission, things like that. But most of these changes were for special applications, and the vast majority of Land Rovers coming out of Spain at that point were still identical to their Solihull counterparts, still being built under official license, still being built from complete knockdown kit form, and are essentially functionally identical to their English counterparts. We work on a lot of Series 3s here from this period, a lot of Series trucks from Santana and a lot of Series trucks from the United Kingdom. And I buy all the parts the same. I order from typical Land Rover parts suppliers in the UK for a Series 3, whatever it is I'm working on, the parts arrive and they fit in almost every case identically. In rare instances where the part might be a tiny bit different, the English part can always be retrofitted without much hassle. So throughout Series 3 production, a Santana is essentially functionally identical to its English counterpart in terms of mechanical configuration, parts availability, drivability, these sort of things. The changes are minor and mostly cosmetic or for comfort. But there was one other difference in the Santanas in the Series 3 days, and that is the assembly quality was, if anything, better than the trucks coming out of the United Kingdom. The British Leyland era Land Rovers were a little bit slapdash in terms of their construction quality. They were not terrible, but they were not enormously consistent year to year. Most Land Rover enthusiasts and restorers find that during this period, a comparable Santana is a little bit better screwed together and a little bit better built. But all of these changes, parts, modifications, build quality, are very minor in the grand scheme of things. And throughout the official license, throughout Series 3 production, all the way through not the end of the Series 3s in 1983, a Santana Land Rover is essentially identical to its English counterpart and can be treated as such. So if you're looking for a series Land Rover and you are trying to decide whether a Santana is a good fit for you, you don't really need to think of it as a Santana. You can think of it by and large as any other series Land Rover. Virtually identical in terms of mechanical configuration and parts availability and with build quality that is comparable throughout and in some cases even better. Same engine, 2.25 liter in petrol or diesel form, same gearbox, same drivetrain, same brakes, same body panels, same electrics, same hydraulics, same everything. And in instances where there are minor cosmetic changes, the taillights, for example, on some models of Santanas during this period, or the exact shape and contour of the driver's seat for a little bit more comfort, if that bothers you, the Solihull parts can be retrofitted easily. In general, when you're buying a series Land Rover that was assembled from a complete knockdown kit shipped from Solihull, it's not terribly relevant where that vehicle was assembled. It's a real Land Rover, it's tough, it's durable, it's everything it would be if it was assembled in England. And then in 1983, the official license between Solihull and Santana ended, and there was no longer any formal agreement for Santana to produce officially licensed Land Rovers in Spain. But it is not where their relationship ended. Santana continued to produce Land Rovers, and this brings us into this third era of Santana production, the 2500 model. Land Rover in England introduced the Defender, and Santana introduced a vehicle they called the 2500, which was a Defender-looking vehicle, but is much more accurately described as a highly evolved Series 3. And throughout the 1980s, Land Rover in England built and marketed the Defender, and Santana built and marketed the 2500. But Land Rover did not offer Land Rover trucks directly in Spain. They did not compete with Santana for the Spanish market. And they allowed Santana to produce the 2500, which is visually quite similar to a Defender. Now, why did they do this? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Part of it is that they wanted Santana's five-speed transmission. Santana had developed a five-speed manual transmission and Land Rover wanted to use it in their V8-powered Defenders. So Santana was producing these five-speeds here in Spain and shipping them to England where they were being installed in V8-powered Defenders. 
And Santana, meanwhile, was building 2,500 models using mostly Land Rover parts and paying licensing fees to be able to do that. And there was sort of a cooperative detente between the two companies throughout the 1980s where they sort of worked to, if not help one another, at least not step on each other's toes. Because there were some other less publicized things going on here. For example, Land Rover in England was prohibited from selling vehicles and parts into Iran, but Santana in Spain was not. So Land Rover was selling parts and vehicles in Iran through Santana. And throughout most of the 1980s, Land Rover did not market their trucks directly in Spain. They sold Rover passenger vehicles only, but no defenders. So they sort of left the Spanish market to Santana. But this is a confusing period of Land Rover production in Spain. And it's where I think a lot of the misinformation and confusion comes from about Santana's in general. Because although the earlier series vehicles produced under license were functionally identical to their English counterparts, the Santana 2500 was not identical, functionally or otherwise, to the Defender. As I mentioned, it can be thought of more as a highly evolved Series 3. And in fact, in Europe, it is often known as a Series 3A or sometimes even a Series 4. The 2500 had bodywork that was similar to a Defender. It had the same five-speed Santana transmission that the V8-powered Defender used. It had the same 12J 2.5 liter engine that came in the early Defenders. It was still four-wheel drive as opposed to the Defender's full-time all-wheel drive system. It was still leaf sprung as opposed to the Defender's long travel coil springs. And most importantly, it was still riding on an evolved version of the Series 3 chassis. So it was physically shorter. And although the parts used to build the Santana 2500 were still largely Land Rover parts or parts derived from Land Rover parts, they were not identical to the pieces that would come out of a Defender because the vehicle was quite a bit different. And particularly as the Defender evolved throughout the 1980s and into the 1990s, it became quite a bit more refined, more civilized, whereas the Santana 2500 soldiered on in largely evolved Series 3 format. And because the parts used to construct it were a little bit of a mishmash between Series 3 and Defender bits, finding exactly what you need for a Santana 2500 can sometimes be a little bit tricky. Now, all of it is ultimately available, but finding parts for a Santana 2500 is not often as easy as just opening up a catalog or a website for Land Rover bits and ordering exactly what you need. The rear springs for a short wheelbase 2500, for example, might be the rear springs off a Series 3 109 five-door Land Rover. And so although you can get those from a Land Rover supplier, knowing what to order in the first place is the trick with owning a Santana 2500. And unlike the series trucks that were produced under official license before them, no compelling argument can be made that a 2500 is the same as a Defender or even as good as a Defender. It simply isn't. It's a tough and rugged and durable little donkey, but it's not the same as a Defender, and the Defender's a better vehicle in pretty much every way. And I think this period, this third era of Santana production, is where all of the confusion about Santana in general remains. Because people see these 2500s, they learn about them, they look at them, they take them apart, they find out that they are quite a bit different from a Defender, and they level criticisms at them. Now, those criticisms may be valid, but uh, taking those criticisms and applying them to all Santanas ever made is both incorrect and unfair. Now, what does this mean? It means that all of these vehicles are unique and interesting, and they all have a place in Land Rover history. And although distinctions can be drawn between them, the reality is, is that having prejudices or holding grudges against any of them doesn't really make any sense. We work with all different types of Land Rovers here at Autology Motors. And as I sit here, I'm looking at a Series 388 built in Spain, a Series 2A Solihull truck, several Defenders, several 2500s. And the Santana 2500 is quite a bit less expensive than a comparable Defender. And since the body shell is basically the same, and most of the bits are retrofittable, we tend to build Santana 2500s here to look like Defenders. Now, we don't do that to deceive. We also build a lot of actual Solihull built Defenders. But a Santana 2500 can be built to look very similar to a Defender at a much lower price point. And as a result, it provides a lot of the panache, a lot of the style, a lot of the experience of owning a Defender at a price that's much more palatable for a lot of buyers. And they are inherently rugged and strong and tough and capable off-roaders. And that makes them a great choice for some people. Now, I'm not pushing Santana 2500s on anybody. We probably do build 
three or four defenders for every Santana 2500 we build. But for the people we build them for, they're a fantastic option. And in a lot of cases, the only option. So what is a Land Rover Santana? Well, from 1958 to 1983, it is a series Land Rover like any other, produced in Spain under official license from complete knockdown kits sent from England, with build quality and parts availability that is comparable to a series truck in all of those years of production. And if you're talking about a Santana 2500, 1983 or 1984 through the early 90s when they stopped making them, then a Santana is a defender-looking vehicle that has refinement and performance characteristics closer to the Series 3 that it replaced. Santana was a highly successful company, a proud company with a long history of Land Rover production. And although looking at a 2500 and comparing it to a Defender and saying it's not the same or it's not as good is a valid criticism, Taking those criticisms and applying them across the board to all Santana production throughout their history is not accurate and not fair. So I hope that helps explain a little bit about what Santana is. I hope it clarifies at least a little bit their relationship to Land Rover, their place in Land Rover history, and how the trucks are different or similar to their Solihull built cousins. If this video raises more questions than it answers, ask me in the comments below, I'll be happy to respond. And as always, please like and subscribe. It helps me bring more videos to you. And of course, if you'd like a Land Rover for yourself, a series truck, a Santana, a Defender, a Range Rover Classic, or even a Mercedes-Benz Gelendewagen or any of the other types of vehicles we build, get in touch. I can be reached through the website, autologymotors.com. And please follow us on Instagram. We are at Autology Motors. We post a lot of photos and videos of our work there and some behind the scenes things as well. It's been a pleasure. Get out and enjoy your trucks and we'll see you next time. Thanks.